I'm gonna record our interview. Okay, um, first of all, how was the concert last night in Florence? It was fantastic. You know, I mean, it, what an incredible city. We had never ever been before and I've dreamt about it literally since I was young. Okay. So to get to go and even be in Firenze was really special. And, you know, we're always surprised when people turn up to our shows. We always expect the hall to be empty. So whenever we're there and there's lots of bodies, we're like really thrilled. Okay, nice. And um, um, a question about the music industry. How uh, the music industry changed from the 90s to these days? Um, do you miss something from the past? Or on the contrary, are, you, um, are there any aspects of the way Uh, of making music today that uh, you you enjoy that you prefer you know it's a really good question it's such a big question though you know because the world has changed so much since the 90s and you know ever since September 11th I feel like Western life has changed for the worst in a way you know we're all a little more tense and we're all a little more concerned and terrorism seems to have taken a, a, a firmer hold on our lives in a way. So do I miss the, the sort of innocence of the 90s? I absolutely do, because it was a beautiful time of sort of relative peace. Okay. So I miss that. The music industry, I couldn't give a toss about. I, I feel like the industry itself that surrounds musicians is exploitive and um, repulsive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the people who make money from musicians do the same things that they did in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s before it. And, you know, they will continue to exploit musicians till the time immemorial, you know, it will never mm -hmm. stop. So the music industry has no sympathy for me, nor am I a supporter of it. And I feel like in some ways it hasn't changed at all. The way that we ingest music, like you and I, that has changed. And that has had a huge impact on the ability of a, of a working musician to, to uh, make a, a, a decent enough living, you know, to scrape by uh, has become very difficult for so many musicians. And, you know, we're lucky. We came out in the 90s, we enjoyed a phenomenal success at a time when people bought records. And now people don't buy records and therefore so many musicians cannot make a living doing what they love. and. I find that heartbreaking in a way, you know, I feel like it's immoral to take music from musicians. But at the same time, there is an entire generation who've grown up believing that music should be free. And they're not really considering that it's intellectual property or that it has any worth. And that kind of kills me, you know. In fact, you anticipated me because one of the next question was if you ever felt manipulated or exploited by the yeah, the music industry. But maybe you lived the, the 90s, so you were lucky at these uh, those times. But now uh, I understand that's more difficult. Also for you that you're one of the greatest band of the world. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I wish. You know, we have been exploited by the industry. Um, we've made so many people so much money. Um, oh, there, there was a, I'm thinking of one particular instance where our publishing deal specified that we should make a certain amount of, of, of uh, advance from them because we'd reached our third record, our fourth record, excuse me. We'd, we'd come to our fourth record, it was about time to release our fourth record and there was an agreement in place that our publishing, then, our publishing company then owned us, owed us a, a, a significant sum of money. And they just said, no, we're not paying you that money. Mm -hmm. I know we said that we would, and we know it's in the contract, but we're not going to give it to you. And there was nothing we could legally do about it. It was just a complete breach of contract, but we were not protected in any way. Mm -hmm. So I find that an obscene abuse yes. of contractual law. But there's no one around really to fight for musicians, you know, and so you just have to take it. You know, we recently played a show Uh, in, a, in another country, we played the show, we did an incredible job. We got home and we got stiffed on 50% of the fee because the, the promoter then decided he wasn't going to pay us and there was nothing we could do about it. So wow. it just goes on and on and on and on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, by the way, are one of the lucky ones. We're lucky. Yeah, yeah, of course, but mm, 
this sounds that there's no respect for well i just yeah uh, i i guess that people don't understand it's i yeah. don't think people are trying to be mean to musicians or anything silly like that but they see beyonce's and they see lady yeah. gaga's and rihanna's mm -hmm. and they think that everyone's like that yeah. and it's not like that at all yeah. you know and um, strangely the birth um, gives the impression that you're um, totally abandoned to the philosophy of I do things the way I want and uh, um, well for example you you took your own space your own time um, there are some songs like uh, uh, a man's uh, like um, uh, so we can stay alive that lasts more than six minutes for example so uh, you abandoned all the uh, pop rock uh, standards uh, do you feel more free now yeah, I mean, we, we definitely do. But, you know, it's that's one of the things that society never talks about is as you get older, you get more punk rock. It yeah! Just, it like just it happens is. to everybody. <laughs> you know, you really do. Unless, unless I think there is a tiny minority of people that, that maybe buckle under and, mm -hmm. and give up. But for the majority, the most of the people I know is just you get more and more punk rock and you stop giving a fuck. And I think we realise we're living at a time in our culture where... The most beautiful work is not necessarily recognized. Mm -hmm. The most admirable people are not put on the front covers of our magazines. And I think we in Garbage understand that and we realize that we can no longer concern ourselves with what the mainstream media is interested in or, mm -hmm. or deems of worth because we are in absolute disagreement yes. for the most part. And so we realized in order for us to have a sane, healthy, interesting, curious, adventurous life, mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to draw our own rules. We had to just forget mainstream culture and accept that we operate out with it. And we have to accept that we will therefore meet a lot of resistance. You know, when you're, when you're rebelling against a system, you will be rejected by that system. That's just how it works. Yeah. So we've had to make our peace with that and we have because we consider a good life a worthy life rather than buying into what we believe to be very sad practices that are being foisted upon young people in particular but all of us mm -hmm. we reject it okay um as i can tell you do too actually yeah but um, i totally agree with yeah. you in this so yeah. <laughs> and I think actually the majority of people are beginning to feel the same way as, as us too. I think we're all a little sickened yeah. with what's being thrown at, down our throats and being taught to our young that we should be looking up to these horrible edifices of like mm. complete superficiality and and uh, narcissism. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, that's what actually it ruins the the world and yeah. we're living in i i agree with you yeah um, this is a very uh, intimate album um, perhaps it is the most introspective album you produced um what was the trigger uh, that led you to this result uh, um, did something happen also maybe in your private uh, dimensions uh, and um, led you to this uh, this intimate dimension it's very the most introspective and i rediscover you with this album i can say personally so you know, there was a trigger there was something that happened i think it was a culmination of events um my mother died and when you're when if you're close to your mom you have a, if you have a good mom that's a phenomenal loss in your life you know that you will never really recover from i don't think so I lost my mother and I really had to grow up and I realized, wow, my Joan of Arc isn't here anymore. There is no Joan of Arc, it's just me. And I felt a sudden determination to live as an adult, like make a conscious effort to be uh, responsible for myself in the world. And that changed the way I wanted to make music and the, what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And Obviously, again, you respond to culture, and I, as I touched on earlier, I just wanted to rebel against everything I was being told was true, that I knew in my gut was not true. And I realized I just had to be the, 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 the little boy who points out the emperor's new clothes, 
you know I, I was I was okay with that I was determined to just live truthfully I guess yeah wow <laughs> who are the strange little birds everybody you know every single person I think we're all so foreign to one another you know even when we share the same skin color or the same uh, political interests or the same religious beliefs we're all strange to one another and the I think the the struggle of being a human being in the world is to try to understand who the strange what the strange is and and what that can teach you and how it can enhance your life you know we can all teach each other so much and instead we're all rejecting one another on the basis of really silly things yeah. and not realizing that actually we're all the same we want the same things everybody wants to be happy everybody wants to find love everybody wants to feed their children and have a roof over their head yeah. you know and not worry about paying for food and paying for rent you know I think that's a basic yeah. and that therefore means every person in the world is the same as me and I wish we could all just be a little more kind to one another yeah and just go a little bit deeper yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I agree I understand it though you know when we all feel scared we all put up fences but the more we fence ourselves in and fence everybody else out we create so much discord and discord is not good for anybody I agree also. <laughs> it's, no, it's, Let's it's start true. a revolution right here it's today. It's, it's true. I try to, to have a revolution every day in my Good life. Girl, in my, a in great my... fucking quote. I wish that was my quote. That's a great quote. I'm going to steal that from you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You can. You can That's do so it. so good. Um, what is the favor, your favorite? You know, you're going to have a good, happy life. You know that with that philosophy. Oh, That's a really I hope. brave I hope powerful statement to make. I hope. I hope so. When we have finished, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> okay. And, okay, but first this interview and then. All right. If I have Let's one do more our business, one first. more, <laughs> one more minute. Okay. What is your favorite song of this album? And uh, among all the songs you wrote, uh, you produced, uh, which one is um, your favorite to be expressed on the on the stage live? Well, my first, my I don't really have favorites to be honest because I feel like every song sooner or later becomes part of our whole fabric but when i wrote the lyrics to amends okay. against the boys music i felt like i coughed up something that i needed to cough up and okay. get out and get rid of and uh i felt relief when i when we wrote it and i'm i love it and i'm proud of it and it feels whenever i hear it i'm like oh it sort of soothes me and then i guess For me, the most significant song in our catalogue, for me personally, was mm -hmm. Milk, because it was okay. the first time I ever wrote a melody and words at the same time. Okay. I'd never done it before. Okay. And to get it on a record and hear it in the studio and, and see it on a piece of vinyl was... Amazing. Blew my mind. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, is there any difference in performing on the American stages and on the European stages for you? not in the way you perform but uh, in the feelings you get uh, from the crowd from the public uh. not really I mean we were talking earlier actually in the boys dressing room about how privileged we are as musicians because you get an insight into the world that nobody else gets yeah. because people come to musicians with open hearts and you see that Again, it goes back to what we were saying yeah. earlier. It's just everybody's the fucking same. You know, they connect with your music and they feel something when it's being performed and that's either joy or it's sadness or it's relief or mm -hmm. it's comfort. There's a billion and one things happen to, you know, when you look out into an audience, you see it, people, everyone's responding differently, mm -hmm. but the reasons they are there are the same. And yeah. that's really beautiful and really comforting, you know. Our, our perspective as musicians is that is a generous one because people are so generous to us and so we don't feel the same kind of hatred or concern about our differences as our politicians would have us believe you mm -hmm. know um, what are you thankful for today and on the contrary what makes you feel angry and makes you <sighs> want to say fuck you loud I'm grateful to be alive and be healthy, to be a musician, to bring comfort to people. As I've gotten older, I realize I'm in service to the people. At first, it was in service to my ego. Or actually, 
that's maybe unfair because I was so insecure. My ego wasn't even really fully formed. I mm -hmm. just wanted to be heard and I wanted to show off and have attention. Okay. If the truth be told, that's, I'm sure, what the driving force behind being in a band was. And then as I've gotten older over the course of a 21 year career, I'm really interested in being an artist and I'm really interested in being creative and of being in service to others. I realize that's a gift we have. Like we can write a song that makes people feel good People can come to our show and walk away feeling better than they did when they came in, and that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> that we so can do that. it became um, your mission. It became my say. mission. Your mission. It's your mission. And then you know, my I, losing my mom. My sister had two children. I don't have kids, but my sister and I are very, very tight. Mm -hmm. So when she had children, something went like changed for me, yeah. and I became like a Joan of Arc myself. Because my yeah. mom was Joan of Arc, and now I'm like, okay, I need to be the Joan of Arc. Yeah. And I want to fight for other people who are not as lucky as me, who are not as physically able as me, who don't have the ability of articulate language at their, you know, I'm articulate, I'm, I can express myself mm -hmm. and everybody necessarily doesn't have that talent. So I'm like, oh, I can articulate for you. Don't you worry, <laughs> I've got your back. <laughs> I'll go into battle for you. <laughs> I was so sure you were this kind of people, this kind of person, and I'm so, so happy oh, to see that good. you actually are like this, <laughs> really. Oh, I, I have no words <laughs> to so say. Cute. Um, what advice would you give to musicians who would like to start making music today, independent music? Ooh, see, that's a difficult one because I feel like my advice probably has no bearing on anybody else, you know, okay. because my experience is so different from everybody's and, and theirs are different to mine. The one thing I always say to young musicians is if you are burning to do it and you okay. have to burn, if you're not on fire, you must not do it because you're not fit for the job. It, okay. will, des it will destroy your temporary, des temporarily destroy your happiness. But if you burn to do it, then just fucking do it. Yeah, you will have the, the strength to Yeah, and on. keep doing it, like, because it's difficult for everybody, male, female, whatever gender you may feel you believe yourself to mm -hmm. be, it's difficult and it's a challenge. And the challenge is for you to just keep doing it. Even yeah. When you're not making money, when nobody's telling you you're any good, mm -hmm. but if you burn to do it, just keep doing just it. Do it. And sooner or later, I always say to young people, it's like, you just build a brick. You don't have to build a fucking wall okay. or a castle. You just bring, build your little brick and keep building bricks. And then one day you'll look back and you'll go, holy fuck, I built <laughs> I this huge wall. castle, or, you know? <laughs> okay. Or my big wall, or you just just keep digging in. But it's tough, it's really hard. And if you were starting today, how would you imagine things? I don't think I would have a career if I had to start today because I'm not like a showbiz kid. You know, okay. I don't, I don't, I didn't go to theatre school, mm -hmm. I don't dance, I okay. don't, I don't sing like the so-called great singers, you know, like a Mariah mm -hmm. Carey yeah. or a Christina Aguilera, yeah. I can't sing like that. And I feel like very much right now, it's all about these showbiz kids, what I call the showbiz kids, who are beautiful to look at, mm -hmm. they're, they're phys great physical yeah. specimens, they sing incredibly well, they're incredible dancers and they sing material that makes people feel joyful and mm -hmm. want to dance. But it's not challenging and it's not dark and it doesn't ever deal yeah. with things that are difficult. And I'm the opposite of that. I'm yeah. like the weirdo in the corner yeah. going, yeah, I know you all feel good right now, but there's a uh, bunch of like weirdos who've just come in the back door and you're not paying attention to them, you know? I feel like I, I'm an, uh, I like to sound the alarm. Okay. And that isn't really in fashion right now. You know, young. I know there's. I meet them all the time. These amazing artists. Yeah, of course, but nobody wants to know. And they, you know, if they're not a young Rihanna or a young Beyonce, nobody's interested really, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah. But that'll change. It's, it's changing already. Actually, I feel like over the last, maybe the last five years, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's a curiosity again for dark. Dark is such a stupid word. A, a, a more realistic look mm -hmm. at the world, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, how do you manage the relationship with your fans? I know it's very important for you, right? Um, do you think uh, uh, the new media, the social networks, uh, may help you in managing the relation with your fans, or do you feel 
social networks, social medias are good or bad tools. Uh, they are dangerous for you or I don't know, maybe fans can make you um, feel suffocated sometimes because you're overloaded with um, their messages, with their emails, in your Facebook pages, for example. I don't know. How do you manage everything? I just accept that they're there. They're tools. I don't have to pick them up. Mm -hmm. I can leave them on the table if I want. Yeah. I found social media to be frustrating, much like everybody else, but I've also found it incredibly yeah. illuminating, mm -hmm. interesting, exciting, provocative. I've learned a lot from people, whoever they may be, they may not be fans even, but they'll jump into maybe some of the threads and people have taught me stuff. Yes, there's a lot of trolls out there, but I just ignore them. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck if you're trolling me. Yeah. I, I don't know you, I'll never meet you. I don't give a shit about your opinion, you know? Yeah. Um, so, in general, I think it's been interesting. I mean, it's definitely changed culture and yeah. changed the role of a musician. We're, we're never again going to have the kind of mystique that, you know, these greats in the 60s and mm -hmm. the 70s had. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mystique, I don't even give a fuck about mystique either. It's like, I just want to live an honest life and yeah. be here now. I don't care if somebody's looking at me and thinking I'm really interesting or mysterious I don't okay. want to be mysterious <laughs> I just want to be normal yeah, yeah. you know you I want to want connect to with people yeah I want to connect with people I don't want to be removed from them okay I think sometimes really famous people they like the removal yeah it's power it's like old-fashioned idea of monarchy mm -hmm. they like being removed and feeling superior and different yeah and I'm always like we're exactly the same the as same, you, yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah. We just it's play always, music. It's always the same philosophy that we, yeah. we were talking about. Uh, yeah, I agree. No, because I I follow you on, on Facebook, and we when we have finished, I am going to tell you this thing. But back to business. <laughs> yeah, but um, I see you you use it uh, a lot. I would say yeah. you, you share with people a lot of things, a lot of, of thoughts, uh, uh, images, uh, uh, sentences, inspirational sentences. So... I was interested in uh, understanding how you, uh, yeah, your opinion on, uh, on yeah. social media. So thank you. Um, okay, the last burning question. I love are burning you... question. Okay, it's a little bit difficult because <laughs> are you concerned or afraid of the results of the pres presidential election? Oh my God, of course I am. For women in particular, for anyone of color around the world, Anyone of any kind of uh, creed that isn't in line with Donald Trump's, we're all in trouble, you know. He's a hateful person. And I don't mean this in any political way. I respect people who have completely different political position mm -hmm. to mine. I feel like no side has the answer. Yeah. Nobody. No. Nobody knows the real way of managing our lives. And we all struggle, mm -hmm. both like all sides of the equation, we all struggle to like move culture forward, move our civilization forward. But in this case, Donald Trump is a hateful person. Yeah. Full of disdain for, it's seemingly everyone aside from white businessmen. Mm -hmm. And you know, he he's so dangerous because I don't think he even understands who he is. You know, he says there's no one, quote unquote, and during a presidential debate, there's no one who has more respect for women than me. Um, this was a day after, mm -hmm. you know, audio surfacing of him being so disrespectful to yeah. women and insinuating that he can basically touch them wherever he wants to, whenever he wants to, because he's famous. Now, as someone who respects women would never in a million years say the things that he yeah. did. He says that he respects blacks, Mexicans, immigrants, Muslims, and yet he has been repulsive yeah. in his dealings with them and the things that have come out of his mouth. To me, anyone who votes for this person is not listening, is mm -hmm. not choosing to hear. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, Hillary may not be perfect. She may have dirt on her hands like every single politician around yeah. the world. It's impossible to be a politician without getting your hands dirty. Yeah. She's no saint, but yeah. she is not a hateful person. Yeah, you know? like, like Trump is. Yeah. yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. Sorry, we're talking about the American election again. <laughs> it's all we talk about, right? It's really scary. No, because here in Italy, um, we have news, of course, but 
they are filtered and the, in these days uh, um, the journalists uh, uh, tell us that maybe there's a possibility that Trump uh, yeah. could win and this is wow I, I told myself okay how this could happen why Americans should vote for a person like that okay here in Italy we are we are in trouble with uh, politicians okay we it's I think seven or eight years that we are governed from uh, people we didn't choose okay they made the government themselves the politicians and we didn't vote them the, it, this is the second or third government that we didn't vote mm. so we are really in trouble yeah, you're used to but it. I think about Americans and I I continue to repeat myself how could Trump win the election we I'm very worried about this every because every single day the, unfortunately the answers to that are incredibly complex to say nothing of geographically how mm -hmm. enormous America is how poor their education system is despite being a superpower their education system is falling into the into the sea basically mm -hmm. very poor funding of of education across the board when you don't educate your people yeah. they're easily manipulated like yeah, manipulated and there's a lot of frustration in america a lot of people who don't have jobs who are struggling and they're angry they don't feel they're being heard there's also a whole sort of the amazing column in the new york times this morning about that there's a whole swathe of white America that is feeling the sort of slide of white power secede okay. and they're panicking and feeling scared and they're railing against that, you know, because domi the domination of the white man yeah. is, is, is beginning to mercifully yeah. fade into just the cosmopolitan yeah. melting pot of America, which is wonderful, but I, there's mm -hmm. this contingent that feels threatened by that. I mean, yeah. it's complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. But. Okay, we've finished. <laughs> it's okay, 27 minutes, Woo! not 20, okay. <laughs>